It's time to get back down to business. In one place that's all business, the Mississippi Capitol Building. It's Jackson's epicenter and within these marble walls where laws impacting Mississippians are born. The House Agricultural Committee is the second biggest in the Mississippi Legislature and headed up by Representative Bill Pigott. He gave our own Leighton Span a wide-ranging interview into how he got started in the political realm and what his team is doing for the betterment of the state's farmers. Tell me a little bit about your farming operation, what, right. what it encompasses, what you do, what you used to do. Well, I, I came back to the farm when I graduated Mississippi State. And, uh, it was an old-time dairy farmer. My dad dairied most of his life. Uh, my grandfather started dairying with my dad years ago, and it just kind of evolved into the main operation as uh, cotton left it, the South. Uh, it's been a good life. I can't complain. He's raised a family, two children on it. It's a great place to raise children. Uh, it's constant work. You can learn how to work on a farm, but we, I dairied until I got elected to the House of Representatives, and shortly after I got elected, I dispersed the dairy. Then I transitioned into beef on my farm. How does a South Mississippi farmer transition into politics? How did that come about? That is a, that's a hard question, actually, how you get into politics. Uh, politics always have been interesting to me. Uh, been involved with some organizations that, you know, kind of in, it, some reason there you want to make a difference. You think you can make a difference. Not necessarily true, but you, you strive to make a difference. So it don't take about two or three people ask you to run, and you know you're done over your head in it. But that's basically the way I got in it. It's just uh, watching it and the lack of a. Actually, one of the reasons lack of a knowledge of agriculture in the legislature. Uh, we are. Dis redistricting is done every 10 years, and you wind up with shift in population. You get more uh, urban legislatures, and then you do rural, and that gets to be a problem. I saw it somewhat of a problem with some great people here, but as we move away from the farm, so the legislature get, uh, gets moved away from agriculture. Well, you've alluded to this, but you obviously find a lot positive about, you know, working with people and helping the people of Mississippi? You know, uh, you get frustrated with, with the legislative process. There is probably what keeps you going is the calls from people who don't ha have a problem, have no earthly idea how to go about finding the right person. And when you can get that person some help and they call you back, and they thank you and thank you. It makes it worthwhile to try to serve the people. Because it's just a matter of trying to balance everything and make sure the right things happen. Let me ask you, um, not just speaking of bills that the committee has handled this year, but agriculture, what issue is really close to your heart, would you say, regardless of whether there's been a bill affecting that? Yes, sir. Uh, agriculture to me, is a driving force of Mississippi economy. Uh, it's the largest uh, industry in Mississippi. And in 2016, the farm gate value was $7.6 billion, so that's quite a substantial number. And my, my goal is to make sure that Mississippi stays a right to farm state, that we, we have no legislation that would instruct undue regulations on the farmers that would give them where they want to be a large farm or small mom and pop operation to give them that means where they can uh, uh, be productive for Mississippi. So that's the main. I think we're looking at something that's going to hurt down the road is water rights. That seems to get to be more and more of an issue. but. Uh, uh, also some of our uh, environmental restrictions. So it's my goal to try to keep it as simple for as complicated as it is to farm, to make it where they can farm the best they can. 
and a lot of what you're speaking of there is coming from the federal side. If a lot of state. it's federal. A lot of it's federal. That interplays with the state. And I have nothing, no control over the federal, federal regs, but just for our state inspection and all, make sure that they are no stricter than the federal regs. As a farmer, what concerns you the most when you look at the future, what's down the road here in Mississippi? Uh, age of the farmer is getting to be, and it seems to be a, a issue every year. We, we don't have as many young people going into farming that we can, that should be, I think. Uh, it's very difficult to walk off the street and be in the farming business. It takes a huge investment. And, I'm, and most families, young families nowadays, they don't want to be tied 24-7 to, to a farm. So there's other opportunities. But I think that's one issue we're facing. I think we're facing other issues of competition for our national natural resources that we got for farming. And also just uh, um, the, uh, over, the burden of overregulation is, is, is something that needs to be addressed. Can you speak any as far as uh, extension and how ex yes, sir. extension yes. has been involved in helping you as chair of the House Ag Committee? Yes, sir. Uh, try to work real closely with Mississippi State Extension. Uh, Mississippi State is very important to me. Uh, they are my primary resource person. Even I told you we work closely with the Farm Bureau and the Cattlemen Association, but the extension has a real good feeling of what's going on in ag and a good feedback, and they're here uh, pretty regular to update us on what's going on with the extension. And they're very important for uh, every county in Mississippi to have an extension worker in that county to help the farmers. So they do a great job.